good afternoon previous session we learned about so how greece country got independence by the ottoman empire so through the treaty of constantinople of 1832 so this the treaty of constantinople of 1832 recognized greece as an independent nation now let us discuss about the romantic imagination and national feeling the romantic imagination and national feelings see we know that after discussing about the greece how got independence so there the national feelings it was worked a lot in Greece, because those were excited even in the different part of the European countries. So they were all extended their support to gain independence, and they were all worked for Greece independence against the Ottoman Empire. See, the development of nationalism. or did not come about only through a wars and territorial expansion so we should not think always like that so the idea or the concept of the nationalism so they did not come about only the uh, war or the territorial expansion so even the role of the culture that is also very much important so uh, about this the culture played an important role in creating the idea of the nation the same thing which was happened in the greece that we are already knows that see the idea of the nation through the culture so how so there was a beautiful example before us that is about how the greece got an independence so here the culture also played a vital role or an important role so in creating the idea of the nation so especially art and poetry stories and music so these are all helped express and shape nationalist feelings so stories poetry art even the paintings also even the music also see through these different ways so the scholars or the nationalist so they were expressed their new ideas and even so these were all becomes a very uh, successful media to reach the common people also especially those who cannot read and those could not read and write see <clears throat> let us uh, see that at uh, romanticism see the romanticism it was actually a cultural movement which sought to develop a particular form of nationalist sentiment see romantic artists and poets generally criticized the glorification of reason and science so they were criticized the glory of the glorification of reason and also science were criticized by the Uh, artists and the poets also and they were focused instead of emotions intuitions and even mystical feelings so their effort was to create a sense of shared collective heritage a common cultural past and the basis of a nation so this is what the notion of the artist and the poets so they were instead of focusing on the science and the reason instead of glorification the science and reason so even so through emotions and intuition and even the mystical feelings
So their effort was to create a sense of a shared collective heritage, a past common, the cultural, as the basis of the idea of a nation. See, uh, the some of the romantic poets such as <coughs> the one of the German philosopher who is called as John Gottfried. John Gottfried. See, the John Godfrey he was actually one of the German philosopher. Okay, the full name of this person was John Godfrey Harder, who was a little between 1744. Seventeen forty-four to eighteen not. See, he was claimed that the true German culture was to be discovered among the common people. Are you getting now? So, one of the <coughs> romantics, the philosopher, especially who was came from the German Johann Gottfried Harder was lived in between 1744 to the 1803. So he was claimed that the true German culture was to be discovered among the common people. See, that's about the Dawes Oak. Dawes Oak. That means common people. Okay. See, it was uh, through how? Folk songs, folk poetry and folk dances. That the true spirit of the nation, that's called as a, the Wolzist. The Wolzist, that is also the German word. Okay. So, it was actually how the German culture was to be discovered among the common people. No, through common people. So, especially those war. It was through folk songs, and folk poetry, so and also folk dances. See, the spirit of the nation, it was popularized. The spirit of the nation, it was popularized. And so collecting and recording these forms of folk culture was essential to the project of nation building. So it was believed like that. So, collecting folk song and collecting the folk poetry or collection of the folk dances so that the true spirit of the nation where through this the nation was popularized. So, collecting and recording these forms of the different folk culture. So, it was essential to the project of the nation. So, the emphasis on the vernacular language and the collection of local folklore was not just to recover an ancient nation spirit, but also <coughs> to carry the modern nationalist feelings also. And even so, those the ancient national spirit, so, they were carried the modern nationalist message to large audience, especially so who were mostly illiterate, illiterate, who could not read and write. See, this was especially, so in the case of Poland, which had been partitioned, which had been partitioned at the end of the 18th century by the great powers Russia, Prussia and Austria. So, what happened? The Poland, it was partitioned by the great powers of Russia, Prussia and then Austria. So, even though 
Poland no longer existed as an independent territory. It was not existed as an independent territory. Even the national feelings were kept alive through music and language. Even though the national feelings of the Polish people, I mean the Poland people, so through the music and through the other ways, so they were kept alive through music and language. So the another one of the person, for example, Karol Kurpinski, Karol Kurpinski, so he was celebrated the national struggle through his operas and music. So turning the folk dances like the Polonaise and Muzuka into nationalist symbols. See, the performing the dance, the folk dance of that respective country, so that they believed that they brought a lot of and created a lot of and that carried the great message to the a large amount of the audience especially and even so it was reached the successfully especially those who are illiterate see the polonaise and mazurka so they were actually becomes a, the symbol of the nationalist see the language also very much important because language also too played an important role in developing nationalist sentiments so after russian occupation the police language was forced out of schools what happened when the poland was occupied by the russia so the police language so it was forced out of the schools and even so they were imposed the russian language they were imposed Russian language everywhere throughout the Poland. Now instead of learning their own language, so now the people of the Poland, they were forced to learn Russian language. So in 1831, an armed rebellion against Russian rule took place which was ultimate, ultimately crushed. So in 1831 what happened now? An armed rebellion. So they were against Russian rule. So they were took place which was ultimately crushed. So following this, many members of the clergy in Poland began to use language as a weapon of national resistance. Even in church also, the clergy, the head of the Christianity, religious, those who are performing the clergies. So, those, the clergies also, they were began to use language as a weapon of national resistance. So, as a result, a large number of priests and bishops were put in jail when they were start to use in church their own language. So, as a result, so the Russian force, so they were even caught them also and then they were all the <coughs> bishops and those who are used the long ways, okay. So the priest, so everyone, so they were put in a jail and some of those, so they were sent to Siberia by whom? The Russian authorities. So for what purpose? as a punishment for their refusal to preach in Russian law. So in Poland what happened? The clergy, the priests and the bishops, so they were actually refused to preach in Russian language. And these the clergy, so they were believed that a large number of the priests and even the bishops, even they were put in jail also, even they were sent in to Siberia also by the authority, I mean the, by the Russian authority as a punishment. So, even though, so these priests and bishops and clergies, so they were used 
their long ways as a weapon of national resistance are getting now see the use of police came to be seen as a symbol of the struggle against russian dominant then we can understood that the power of the language the use of the language so in poland the use of police language also came to be seen as a symbol of the struggle against russian dominance and so that very clearly shows that during this time so the idea of the romantic feelings through artist and even the poets and even the philosophers so they were expressed their own idea with the idea of the nation and these were successfully reached even the common people also because whatever the print materials that may not reach everyone many people during this time the most of the people everywhere they were illiterates so the illiterate people they cannot understand they could not read or write anything also so in that time so the idea of the romanticism that becomes a very powerful weapon and even so it was reached successfully to even common people also so please keep in your mind romanticism that means it was a cultural movement which sought to develop a particular form of national sentiment so through folk dance even the <coughs> folk music and even poetry stories and even play okay and so through this the romantist the especially the romantic artist and even the poets so generally they were criticized the glorification of science and reason which was actually <coughs> focused instead on emotions and initiations and the mystical feelings and their effort was to create a sense of shared collective heritage a common cultural past as the basis of a nation so here even the the german philosopher john gottfried herder also he was actually through the common people the oswak and then even the oziest that means the spirit of the nation was spread by collecting the folk dance and the folk song and even so he was uh, understood that and he was uh, realized that so by collecting by recording uh, this of uh, the different forms of the folk culture and he was believed so and even so he was <coughs> project of those which were very much helpful to nation building understood now so the role of the language the role of the folk dance folk music and even the some other so these are all played an important role to carry the nationalist message to large audience of the specially who are mostly illiterate illiterate people so this was especially so in the case of poland also because what happened so when the poland it was partitioned the end of the 18th century by the great european powers by the russia prussia and austria and afterwards what happened so the use of police language it was actually became a the a symbol of struggle against the russian dominance so everyone so how they were we all of you knows that so the russian authority so they were completely forced the and instead of even in school also so instead of russian police language so they were completely imposed their own language the russian language and even in uh, the prayer hall also in church also there were so many the priests clergies and bishops 
so they were actually used their own language police language as the powerful the powerful weapons of national resistance even they were some of they were kept in jail also and even some of they were sent to siberia also by the russian authority but even the dear students so the idea of that the use of long ways the common sense the collective identity among the sense of collective identity so among all these nationalists so how these the artists and poets they were carried and then they were become as a successful in the struggle to get to gain and even to reach the common people against the authorities now the next class we are going to discuss about hunger hardship and popular revolt thank you have a nice day